Hello, hello. We'll see. Sometimes this takes a minute to load up. <clears throat> see if we're on. Okay, we're on. Good morning. It's me, Cara Carouse, Intuitive Life Coach, and um, we'll give a minute to see <clears throat> who jumps on live with us. 11, 11, Sunday morning. And we're going to um, jump right into rituals and reparenting. This offering um, that I wanted to be able to have as a uh, sample, a preview of what's to come in the Soul Ascension Academy. So just lighting some sage, clearing the space. Good morning, Cheryl. You guys, as you come on, just say hi. Let me know that you're here. If you're watching on a replay, let me know. Um, maybe you've purchased this separately through my site, and that's cool too. So, so yeah, good morning. Good morning, Elizabeth. Um, I am Cara Carouse, and um, today we are talking about rituals and reparenting. So, um, so sometimes my music is a little loud and I don't realize it. So if you guys think the music is too loud, let me know. But I just, I just always like to have it on. So you are tuning in here right now to be able to um, learn more about some spiritual practices to, um, to bring in more structure for your inner child and for your adult self. Um, that's a big part of what reparenting is. And I'll talk more about that. And also um, to be able to to learn more about the void, this emptiness. Um, I posted about it yesterday, last night, and um, and it's really something that I think about a lot. It's something that comes up a lot with my clients that I work with one-to-one um, -one and in a group coaching capacity. Good morning, Janet. Um, so um, also we're going to be looking at love addictions and trauma bonds. I had recorded a video weeks ago about that part one and part two, and those are posted um, like in my social media feed and also um, on YouTube. And um, we're going to be talking about inner child healing and reparenting, like I said, and also establishing these spiritual practices morning, day, night, like all of it, because all of that is so, so, so important and so, um, so supportive to our healing journey. This is a lifestyle, you know, this is ongoing. This isn't something that we just do and it's done. So <clears throat> I'm going to be referencing my book, Keep Showing Up a lot, because um, a lot of these concepts are in this book also. It's available on Amazon. I wrote it a couple months ago um, at a time when I really needed to um, have this content move through me to be able to share with you guys or the reader, whoever it's going to be. So, um, so a, a lot of the stuff is going to come from that. So, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as I said, I'm Cara Perales, Intuitive Life Coach. I typically work with empaths who are really ready to do their deeply healing inner work for the purpose of their soul's ascension. Like ideally, it's to be able to enhance relationships because love and relationships are so much a part of who we are and what we do. And um, and then when we do all that deeply healing inner work, we're able to really co-create a life beyond our wildest dreams. So that's the work I get to do, and um, and I'm super pumped to be able to share all this with you. So I'll share a little bit about my story. Um, if you've been along for these other offerings too, then you've heard um, some of who I am. Oh, Eason, good morning. Good morning. Tuning in from Turkey. Thank you. So, um, so a little bit about my story. I, um, you know, I've always loved spirituality. Um, as I mentioned in my other videos, I came to yoga at age 19 and, um, and really that opened the door to spirituality for me and all these different practices that were a little off the radar. You know, this is over 20 years ago. So it was like Reiki and uh, therapeutic touch and, um, the Bach flower essences, like this is one of my favorite sprays. My, my girlfriends are like, you got your spray. Like this is my anxiety spray. Um, those weren't very, those weren't really mainstream. Essential oils, like, you know, meditation. It was total woo-woo. In, in the law of attraction, it was total woo-woo. But it's always been a big part of who I am. And, and for me, it was always just so much um, 
therapeutic for me and such a big part of my own healing journey that I, I got to be able to incorporate these different tools and bring them in my tool bag and be able to use them and see what, what would work and what, what, what wasn't going to. Because I've loved being able to dig deep. Like I shared in that post um, yesterday about, you know, the void and what we feel is that I've always loved going below the surface. Like I don't do well with surface conversation. Um, I really just love to understand the inner workings of people, um, of myself first and foremost, and of those who I interact with. So I really love to just be like, so what's your story? And I love to just listen. So, so for me, you know, coming to um, my path of yoga and then being able to incorporate all these other spiritual practices and have been very, have been very important for me. And most recently, they really flared up when I had um, my relationship with my twin flame, who I've talked about before, and um, realized that I had an addiction to love with him, and I was trauma bonded with him. And, um, and I, I created those videos, I recorded those videos uh, a couple weeks ago that I was referencing at the beginning of this, this video, this live. And, um, and really, it's just to bring more awareness to it. Like I, you know, in my adolescence, I smoked cigarettes, like fine, I still will smoke a cigarette now and then. Um, I've never been big on addictions, I do like to spend and I'll be addressing like all these different ways that addiction sort of shows up in our lives and how we work to fill the void. Um, <laughs> but excuse me, I really was shown like what addiction looks like when I was trying to break away from my twin flame from this partner who I was with and um and I and I would this went on for two years as I've mentioned before and um the whole relationship was about six years in entirety and the last two were really push pull push pull um I, it was revealed to me my core wounding it was revealed to me in my codependent tendencies that I have worked to overcome and now I get to continue to practice all of my new skills. I get to, you know, I'm in the process of unlearning and relearning just like we all are, but it's an application. It's a practice. It's a lifestyle. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so it was shown to me how when I would, every time I would try to break away from him, my nervous system would go into overdrive. And so I talk a lot about the nervous system and definitely in the Soul Ascension Academy, big, huge understandings of our nervous system. <clears throat> but I would get so um, thrown into my sympathetic activation, which was my fight or flight, and I would um, feel very agitated and um, really on edge, and nothing would soothe my soul unless I had a connection to this person. And even though when I had this connection to this person, it wasn't productive, it wasn't healthy, it wasn't like constructive and we were moving forward in a, in a healthy way. It was very toxic, um, though I still craved it, you know, I still craved it. And I was like, okay, okay, I fucking get it. I get it. I understand how the heroin addict must use again. I understand how the alcoholic needs to have that drink again. I get it. Like, I get it. Because for me in my life, it's always been like, if I don't understand something um, and there's like a slight judgment towards it, I will be shown it <laughs> guaranteed. I will be shown it in my own life. And it's, and it's, you know, I'm thankful that I'm able to see it and, um, and receive it and then now have compassion for those people. Um, and I will even go, so, so this, I'll talk about my thought in a minute, but, um, that was what opened me up to really understanding the importance of being able to establish rituals for myself, because a big part of why addicts use is the ritual of it. Like, um, you know, let's say, uh, a, a heroin addict, whatever their process is, I'm sure it's very ritualistic. An alcoholic, I'm sure it's very ritualistic. They crack their beer open or maybe they get their ice and then they mix their drinks together and then they take that for whatever. The cigarettes, you know, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. Everybody's got a vice. Everybody has something. Let me know in the comments, you guys who are here, if you understand this concept of like, being addicted to something, knowing that it's not good for you, and yet you're still doing it. And um, 
let me know if it's like, yeah, I get it. You know, if you get it or you're just, you're here to see whatever else I'm going to be sharing. So, but let me know. But um, so to me, it, it really hit me like there are these rituals around all that and what better way to be able to replace these unhealthy patterns, these habits with something that is healthy and that is more like, um, supportive of our healing journey because we're here to rise. We're here to ascend our soul's growth, you know, our soul's ascension, like I talked about in 3D to 5D. Yes. Okay. Yes. Janet, get it. Um, yes. Oh, Mitzi. Good morning. Yes. Get it. Elizabeth trauma and addiction go hand in hand. Oh, 100%. And, um, so, so we're going to be talking about, um, establishing these more spiritual, um, healthy, supportive rituals that we can put in place. And in an effort, we're reparenting ourselves. So, um, so a side note that I, that I did have come up that, um, you know, when I was speaking in terms of like judgment and, um, you guys know I have a background in, yeah, Cheryl, our escape issue. Yeah. We want to get, we want to get the fuck out of it. Just like I had in my post, we want to just stop what the way we're feeling. So I, um, I have a background in psychology, uh, my degree from uh, 2003, and then did birth work. I love birth. I love rebirth. And then um, I became a registered nurse. And now I get to work um, with the home birth midwives in my RN capacity. But for years, I was in the hospital, and I was in home care, and I was working in pediatric palliative care. And as a nurse, I, um, I had this major, major... Uh, resistance or sort of opposition, just this hesitation to get certified to um, administer Narcan, which is a, a an opioid reversal agent. And you guys probably know what Narcan is, you know, and we have um, in my area and basically in every area in the country, there is a heroin problem. Like talk about pandemic. This is an epidemic of uh, heroin overdoses and deaths, and it's an addiction and people are trying to escape and everything that you guys we're writing over here for sure, trauma and addiction go hand in hand. So um, really, I had this, like, I was like, no, this aversion is the word I'm thinking of to getting certified in it because I was like, you know what? Survival of the fittest. You guys are totally going to think I'm an asshole. Survival of the fittest. And if they can't get their shit together and they can't get off heroin, that's their path. <laughs> well, then I had my own shit come up with this love addiction and the trauma bond and the way I felt um, around needing the contact when I knew it wasn't good for me. And, and it, it was like death. I felt like I was dying if I didn't have the contact with this person. And I was like, yes, I understand. And so I went and I got, I drove by these, you know, this mobile, mobile health unit and, um, and got certified and now I carry it. And, um, and I, and hopefully I won't ever have to use it, but I am ready and willing to use it and, um, and really hope that, you know, those who do struggle with addiction are able to get to the bottom of it and understand this void. So speaking in terms of the void, um, for those of you who are on now, did you guys see my post just from yesterday about um, the cashier? So I was at the grocery store and I was checking out. Let me know in the comments if you guys saw that. Um, yeah, if you saw the post that I put up yesterday about the cashier, I was checking out and, um, it was this younger guy and, um, he had all these scars on his arm and, um, and, and one of them looked like it had really been deep and it had stitches, you know, there were the scar, the scars from that. And I'm a nurse. So it's like my, my mind is always like, um, nursing judgment, like observe things about people that whatever, I can see that there's more going on. So, um, so I asked him, could I ask you a personal question? And um, he said, yeah, he was open to it. And so I said, are those scars from cutting? And it's a, yeah, you guys saw it. Okay, yeah. So um, he, he said, yeah, and he was super honest. And, um, and I gave him a lot of credit for being as brave as he was. And, and I said, um, how do you feel when you how do you feel when you're doing that? You know, I was wondering if it was like relief when he does it, or if it's like, um, I've never cut, but I know people who I love that have, and, um, <clears throat> and I know it's the addiction and it's the avoiding whatever's actually the, whatever the pain is they're feeling and they want something else to take the pain away. Like I get that. And so I was wondering if it was like, he, he was going to say he felt relief after he did it or a distraction from the pain or whatever. 
and he said um he said he sort of interpreted it like what do i what does he feel at the onset of when he's doing it and he said that he felt lonely and empty and like nobody nobody loved him like nobody cares and i was like oh dagger to the heart and um and you know i just kind of paused in that and breathe that in and then i just said yeah i've been thinking a lot about the void i mean i wrote you know it's in my there's a, a lesson in the book about it and um because everybody sort of feels this void this emptiness and it all just shows up in these different expressions so i just i did whatever i could to offer like consolation around like um you know his bravery and then being able to just that he shared that that rawness that authenticity with me and feeling the loneliness and the emptiness and the void. And I just said, a lot of people feel this void and everyone just sort of like handles it differently and um, know that you're not alone. So, um, so that was really eye opening for me too, because it's like, we all have this shit. And to me, you know, when addictions come up, like, you know, people, it, very few of us have been exempt from any trauma in our life. Like everyone has experienced trauma to one extent or another. And that trauma may look like, um, you know, some big, huge, violent act, and, or it may be feeling emotional needs were unmet or feeling neglect in childhood. And, and that may not have even been intentional. That may have just been because your parents were so caught up in their own shit and they gave you a roof over your head and they gave you a meal, you know, three times a day and your needs were met. And, but, but it was like emotionally, there was this emptiness and um, feeling unseen or unheard or like not loved or not validated. Like everybody, we are adults. We are these adults walking around. We are these children walking around in adult bodies. Like that's really how I feel. Have you guys seen that graphic from Burning Man, the festival in um, California? Um, maybe it's even in Las Vegas. I haven't been, but I know it's a big festival out there where it's like the two, um, it, it's a, it was a huge structure because they would show people right next to it, but it's these um, two big feature, big bodies like kind of curled up, um, the structure of them, and then they're back to back, and then the insides are like lit up, the children playing. Have you guys seen that before? Janet, yeah, the generational wounds. Yeah, it all gets passed down. So that image, you know, where it's like just still that child wanting to connect, you know, wanting to connect, wanting to play, wanting to be seen. So, so many of us um, have the trauma that we carry with us. And there's no, um, it's not a competition. It's not like who has the most trauma. It's like we're in it together and we all get to heal together. And when you heal, I heal. And when I heal, you heal. And as we're healing, we're raising our own vibration. And as our vibration is rising, so is that of the collective consciousness. So, and we, we all just get to ascend together when we apply ourselves and do this work, we get the results. So, um, so I think about um, what with addictions and how, you know, Elizabeth, you mentioned addiction and trauma go hand in hand. Yes. And so addiction is addiction is addiction is addiction. And um, that reminds me of when I took um, nutrition in college and my nutrition teacher, she was like, sugar is sugar is sugar. Like, it doesn't matter how you get it. Like the compound is still the same, you know, sugar, uh, honey, whatever, whatever different um, molecular compounds, it's all, you're getting sugar. And so to me, it's like, that's how addiction is. So addiction is addiction is addiction. And we're coming to this place where we're feeling like we need to have an addiction to something to escape the pain, to escape our shadow self. The shadow self is the part, is, is all the parts of ourselves that we want to reject. It's all of the um, insecurities and all the fears and all of the doubts and all of like that lack and the scarcity and the not enoughness and uh, feeling unlovable, feeling unseen, invisible, feeling unheard, like all of that. Our core wounding, um, our shame that we carry around and when we feel embarrassed or ashamed about things in adulthood, it's really likely rooted in childhood and the shame that we carry inside us. Um, guilt is a big core wound, fearing rejection, fearing abandonment, 
not being accepted by others, like all this shit. You guys, we're not alone. You're not alone if you're fe if you felt these things before. Everybody does, and you know, people will say, "Oh, like true freedom is not ever needing the approval of anyone else." You know, like yeah, that's great in theory, but guess what? We're human. We thrive on connection. We thrive on a sense of belonging, and we thrive on acceptance. <laughs> and that acceptance starts with ourselves too. So big part of all of this healing work, uh, the inner child work, the reparenting, set it, putting these spiritual practices in place, a big part of all that is accepting ourselves and loving ourselves right through like the mess, the shit, the shadow self. It's that integration of our shadow self, all of this, the demons, I will say, um, and an integration of like our love and light. And it's all of it. We are all of it. We don't, we're not one or the other. You have traumas in your past. They're with you always. We don't just do a healing and they're gone. They're there. They're a part of who you are. And that's okay. And it's okay to shine light on that darkness. Like that's what we get to do. So the purpose of, so in, in my book, um, Keep Showing Up, a memoir and, and powerful guidebook for empaths to embody self-love, self-empowerment, and self-worth, because who doesn't need some more of that? Um, I talk about lesson 26 is the void and shadow work. And so, um, so when you have a history of trauma or abuse, it's not uncommon to feel the void and then have shadow work to do. The integration of self and being able to transmute the darkness to light is where the magic happens. And core wounds are very loud when we are feeling this void, this emptiness, this not enoughness, this loneliness, like the cashier was saying, lonely, like nobody loves him. Like, yeah, like, honey, we all, we feel that and that's okay. And guess what? You're, we're strong. We're stronger because of that. And we get to rise above it. And so, um, so the shadow self is rooted in the unconscious self, just like our inner child is. And, um, and really it's important that we address that core wounding and then we get to heal, um, all of the addictions. Cheryl, without darkness, there's no light. Absolutely. Yeah. Without no rain, there's nothing blooms like absolutely all of that. So these addictions that come out, it may look like uh, drinking to excess, it may look like shopping to excess, it may look like overeating, it may look like undereating, cutting, um, maybe it's sex, maybe it's working out, maybe it's um, being addicted to love. Like there are just so many different ways that we work as humans, <clears throat> highly adaptable to... Um, to escape that feeling of emptiness and that unworthiness and that not enoughness. So, um, so you guys, those of you who are here right now live and watching on a replay, I challenge you, you know, this, this group intuitive self healers, this is a private group. Nobody in your other feed is going to see any of what you've posted. I challenge you to type in the box, what you feel like your addiction may be. So part of this is just to see, you know, where you are with your level of awareness, awareness of self, because that's what starts, you know, that's what gets us going on this healing journey. And then we get to see how we heal. So type in the comments, type in the chat box, if you feel called to, to share, know that you're not alone. No judgments. Really, it's like, we do it just to be able to disconnect. <clears throat> to disconnect and check out and not feel, not feel so awful. So, um, antidotes, you know, there's a lot of other stuff I've, I write in my book too. Um, Christina, you have a lot of addictions and that's the thing. Like people will say, oh, they have an addictive personality. No, fuck that. There is, there is dysregulation in the nervous system. There's trauma that's probably been unaddressed or unhealed. Um, and there's, you know, I'm sure there's a, a deep desire for genuine connection with others. And I'm sure what you're longing for is just a, is meaningful, fulfilling, satisfying connections with others. And um, self-isolating. Yeah. And probably, um, Janet, you know, you may have just been shown that you're the only one who's going to meet your own needs. 
And so don't, you know, it's not safe to rely on other people. And that's okay. You know, that's what your body has done. And that's what your nervous system has done to keep you safe. Cheryl, worthiness. Yeah, that's a big one. So many people struggle with that one too. <clears throat> um, so antidotes to healing this void that we feel, self-compassion. Well, first of all, awareness, which you guys, you're so brave for sharing these things in the comments. Awareness, self-compassion, boundaries. I'm going to be getting into boundaries a lot, definitely in the Soul Ascension Academy, and especially this coming week. Um, this is Sunday. Um, so this coming week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm having an Empowered Empath three-day series. So every day at 11.11, I'm going to be live in the group, and I'm going to be sharing with you guys <clears throat> different practices, different techniques, um, ways that we can move more into our empowered state as empaths, as people who are able to pick up others' emotions and um, and really sort of see more clearly the situation than, you know, those who are who don't have the gift of, of being an empath. So uh, boundaries is definitely a huge one. Gratitude, reprogramming, patching the heart so um, your, your love tank doesn't leak. Like I have this cup that I've been meaning it's a glass. I've been meaning to like take a video of it because it's one of my favorite glasses. It's, um, at my grandma's, if you guys have read my book or, you know, my story, my grandma was someone who was very, very, um, she was a very important person in my life. And, um, she passed two years ago. Uh, we, ushered her out in a sense, she made the decision to stop eating and drinking. And um, she was just done with life. She was 93, almost 94. And so we got her in hospice and she uh, had her last meal and her last coffee. And um, so we walked her through her, her, her soul leaving her body um, to a year and a half ago. And at her house, her house was always the safe place for me to land. And at her house, um, we, we had this star glass. It was this smaller glass and it had big stars like engraved on it. And between my brother, my cousin and I, we were like, whoever got to have the star glass was like the special one for that day. <clears throat> so we didn't know, I don't know where the star glass went, but then my cousin, just this last Christmas, she had found the star, the star glasses that looked identical at like a thrift store. And she get, she gifted me one. She gave me one in um, and so I have the star glass here and I'll use that star glass any chance I can get, you know, for my little drinks that I'm having and, um, like an airborne or whatever I'm going to drink. That's a smaller amount, four or five ounces. And, um, I noticed the other day that I filled it with water and it was like, there was water shooting out of the bottom of it. Like I had it filled with water and then water was like shooting. So there's a hole in it. And so I'm like, oh my God, the star glass is like, if you don't fill your love tank, like this is the start. It's like always going to be shoot. You know, the water's always going to be shooting out. Like if we don't patch that hole, then it's always leaking. You know, if you don't patch the hole in your heart. It's just, we're there's always this leak. And then it's like never enough. Always looking outward for validation, you know, wanting to be seen still, wanting to be like all of that if we don't patch it within ourselves. So, so that I'll do a video on that and I'll show you. But my mind, that's where my mind goes is it's like, that's what happens when we don't patch that hole in our heart or, you know, whatever in our soul. <clears throat> Surround yourself with others who are going to lift you up. These are still the antidotes to healing this void. <clears throat> Energy work, cranial sacral therapy, Reiki. Um, EFT, remember it's the tapping. I did a video. Oh, I did a video on my wounded to worthy group. Um, EFT is very healing and therapeutic for this hypnosis, support groups, personal development books. You guys just being here. This is an antidote to you helping, you know, heal this void that you feel. <clears throat> so, so, um, other content, other information in my book, keep showing up around, um, that void. And, you know, just this, the notion of addictions and, um, yeah, it, it would be really nice to, um, <clears throat> restructure the way some of, um, addiction programs are run because there's really, you know, there's really so much deep, deep healing work that can be done around that. So, um, so love addictions in particular and trauma bonding, um, I'll touch briefly on them, though I did have these other videos that I created. So the so the trauma bonding um, when we're when we're trying to break away from a, a, a relationship that is no longer serving us and we know it, 
and we know it's unhealthy. We know it's toxic. Um, we know there are codependent um, traits and qualities about it and breaking away from that. There will be, there is a physiological response that goes on in our body, just like that of a drug addict, you know, that withdrawal that unless we have um, the connection or, um, you know, the drug, the substance, what have you, then the nervous system gets soothed. The, you know, the chemical messengers in the brain fire off and everything calms down. Unless we have that, it's like constantly on overdrive. So, so that's how trauma bonds work. And the reason why we get caught up in trauma bonds and why, you know, this unhealthy person feels like home to us is because that is mimicking what we grew up with in our childhood. And so it's mimicking um, parents who were emotionally unavailable or, you know, feeling that sense of neglect or being unseen. Like it's mimicking that same dynamic. It gets acted out in adulthood until we heal it. Our maladaptive um, patterns that we do for ourselves, our insecure attachment styles that we default to, like all of that, until that is healed, the dynamic is going to repeat. And so a big part of the Soul Ascension Academy, the six week online um, group coaching program that starts October 4th, we dive deep and we get to the bottom of all of this stuff and why those patterns were even created in the first place and how to heal around all of that so as we, so as we don't repeat the pattern. We're cycle breakers. We're cycle breakers, <laughs> okay? We're cycle breakers. That's all we're here to do. We're here to break the cycle, right? Are you guys, those of you who are on live with me here, and if you're watching on a replay, are you a cycle breaker? Are you ready to break the cycle, to break the patterns of these maladaptive tendencies and the nervous system dysregulation and just not, you know, feeling so disconnected? Are you ready to feel grounded in who you are? Are you ready to move forward? Are you ready to heal the void and do your inner child healing and do the reparenting and, you know, do all of that so that you can move forward? Let me know what you think in the comments. So, um, so moving to um, inner child work and inner child healing, I did also create a video, um, a record a video around this too, because um, inner child work is something that is extremely, yes, Anna, hey girl, how are you beautiful? Inner child work is something that is extremely supportive of, yay, Cheryl, of being at health. <laughs> yeah, good, Janet, man, you've been showing up too. You, um, Janet was in my inner circle last year um, about this time. We started maybe um, October, November-ish, but yeah, we went through for five months and that was a wonderful journey together. And, um, and yeah, you keep showing up, you keep doing the work. It's beautiful. So, um, so inner child healing, inner child work is so extremely supportive, therapeutic and necessary to do, to get us out of these addictive patterns, to, to, um, heal this void because really what's happening is your inner child, this unconscious part of the mind that feels unseen, feels unheard, uh, doesn't feel validated, doesn't feel loved, like that's all we want fundamentally as children, as adults, that part of ourselves is going to keep flaring up and showing itself within the dynamic in adult relationships until we go back and heal it. And so there are a lot of different ways that we can do this inner child healing. Um, one, um, one that I did, so, you know, this is, I included it in my book, but one I did, and let me see, I think I went past it. See, I, sh oops, I should have marked it, but um, one night I was feeling extremely graspy. I was breaking away from the twin flame and I was feeling that addiction. I was feeling that, um, that craving, that like inkling, like, I just want to reach out to him. I just want to reach out to him. For what? Who the fuck knows? Nothing would have come of it. Same, the same patterns would have repeated themselves, all of that. But it was like, it was starting to build in me. And I was like, okay, like, get yourself out of this. Do your work. Like, this is what I'm here to do. You know, I'm here to hold space for myself. I'm here to hold space for you guys to do, to help me do my own healing work, to help you guys do your own healing work. So it's like, fucking put your big girl pants on and do this. So I created this graph, this. Um, in this same system that I create all my other graphics in. And it's just a picture of me 
it, it's a bunch of pictures of me with my grandma who I just referenced about the star glass and I said in here things that that I feel like I was needing to to hear um this little girl and it's not even just me at these ages it's just what does she need okay I love you just the way you are nothing's missing like worthiness you know Cheryl you're saying worthiness yeah we feel like something's missing in us we feel unworthy we feel like we're not enough so it's like um, nothing's missing. We just got to tell ourselves this. What do you want, my love? What do you need? And then like, I'm not, I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. Like how comforting is it to know that someone is right here? Like you guys, I'm also a birth doula. Um, I've been a birth doula for um, over nine years and I've uh, been at hundreds of births and um, families, families hire me to be with them. Um, to support them during their pregnancy, during their birth, and um, and then immediately right afterwards too. To help, a lot of times it's because they're wanting to have a more natural experience of birth and uh, free of medication. So I, I get to go and I get to be with women while they're laboring and birthing and welcoming new lives into the world. That's one of the things I've sort of put it on hold a little bit. I'm, I'm, I, I do have a client in October, but she's a very good friend of mine. But um, but. Anyways, I've, did, I've done that for many years and I get to be with these families and support them during this time. And one of the most powerful things I say to someone, I mean, I'm very hands-on, so I'm like always touching them and, you know, my hands are always cold, like they're freezing right now. And they love it when I touch them, you know, with my cold hands because it's so, they're hot and it's so soothing. And as, as a Reiki practitioner too, I'm very hands-on and, and help conduct the energy through me to help bring them peace. But anyways... One of the most powerful things I can say to women, um, to a woman laboring physically, getting ready to birth her child, is I'm right here. I'm right here and I'm not going anywhere. And he's right here or whoever the partner is. And like, we're right here with you. You're doing amazing. You're safe. You're good. Baby's good. You know, heart rate's good. Like everything's good. I'm right here and I'm not going anywhere. So how comforting, you know, knowing that just saying that to yourself is very powerful. I'm not, I'm right here and I'm not going anywhere. Like I love to hold my hands like this because this is comforting. I'm, I've got me, like I've got me, I got, I have a great support system. I've, I have very loving people around me and um, those who I know I can lean on, but like I've got me and this is very soothing to be able to do too. So like you're your own hero, sister. You know, you're the one coming to save you. You are the one you're waiting for. And and it's a it's just a matter of doing all of this other work. So the inner child healing, that that's one way to be able to address the little girl version of you. Um, I actually recently have been digging into like adolescent Kara and because I was like way off the beaten path in my adolescence. Um, so I've gotten into like reparenting and and doing work around my inner child. Um, through adolescence and my early adulthood too, because I was still a little lost then. Like we're not adults at 18. No way. I do not believe that for one minute. So, um, so yeah, I, I, there are a lot of ways that we get to go back in and, and address that version of ourselves. Hey, Lily, and address that version of ourselves. So, um, so that's important to be able to do. I get into a ton of that um, in the Soul Ascension Academy. Now, reparenting, what reparenting is, and part of this um, workshop is called um, Rituals and Reparenting, and I'm going to be getting into the rituals in a minute, but the reparenting piece is as our adult self, we get to parent our adult self. And we all got a glimpse of this when we were first stepping into the pandemic and everybody was um, like made to stay home. And, you know, everybody was used to their rituals of going to work in the morning, doing their work, coming back home, doing dinner, going to bed or whatever your day may have looked like. But then when we were home, so many people were working from home and they were like, what the fuck do I do? Like, I didn't even get ready for today. It's like four in the afternoon. Did you even brush your teeth today? Like, oh, I didn't shower today. Like, this is what I look like today. You know, everybody was like their structures, their structure, their routine was so thrown off. And so we got to experience that as a culture, as a society. Uh, little did people know it, a reparenting of ourselves. 
and actually creating the structures like for those of us who are self-employed we get it like we have we have to we get to um put the structures in place for ourselves and reparent in a sense but it's very very important to um we you know we say children need structure in their days so do we okay especially those of us with a history of trauma or abuse because we like predictability we don't want any surprises like there like i was reading about how um people who have a history of trauma or abuse or have anxiety um often love to watch shows that they've already seen before because you don't there's no guessing because you know you know what to expect you know what's gonna come next like i can't even tell you guys how many times i've watched dirty dancing titanic Aladdin, the animated version of it, like in, in a bunch of other movies too, because I just like the consistency and I didn't realize it was because, you know, I don't want any surprises. I just want to know what to expect. But, um, but that's in a sense reparenting too, because it's familiarity, it's stability. We are the ones that create a safe space for ourselves. Like a big part of my home, I moved out from the twin flame two years ago as Anna, same. Yeah, like watching the same shows over and over again. Um, I know there's the delay. So what I was talking about like a minute ago was the shows. So um, when I moved out from the Twin Flame two years ago, um, I moved to this home that I'm in now. And, um, you know, my a big part of what my uh, intention was in, in living here it, it was creating a safe space for myself for my boys, I have two boys, they're 12 and 15 at the time of this recording and, um, and my dog and, you know, creating a safe space. So what does that look like for me? That looks like I like everything clean. I like everything neat and tidy. I like it warm <laughs> or, you know, cool if it's hot out, but even then I don't like it too cool. I like fluffy blankets and pillows everywhere. Like I have a blanket, like, I, I like things warm and cozy. I like crystals everywhere. I have, um, I have candles and crystals and selenite and rock salt lamps and, um, and Christmas tree lights as my lighting. Like I like things dim. I like my incense going. I like my essential oils going. That's all going out there. And I have diffusers in here. And, you know, so to me, it look, my boys have all their birthstone crystals and selenite in their rooms and they have essential oils if they're needing to calm down they know to put them on their feet to help with sleep like all of these different structures that i'm going to be getting into um this is my spiritual guide to um i'm going to talk about this in a minute but um but i i had to i got to create a very safe space for myself it is sacred in here plant like house plants <laughs> you know is it I, because that's a big part of um, reparenting and in creating the safe space for myself. This is my healing journey. This is my lifestyle that I'm choosing to live. So, um, so that's what reparenting is: is being able to um, go back to uh, reparent our adult self and everything that that I need. You know, as, as an entrepreneur and I work from home, this is what I do. Um, working with clients one-on-one -on -one and in my group programs. And then also my schedule varies with when I'm on call with the home birth midwives um, that I get to go and assist the home births. But um, it's very much like I create my own schedule. And so I reparent myself. I put these structures in place for myself and, um, and it works for me. So thinking about thinking to yourself in what ways you can bring more structure into your days and help reparent your adult version, your adult self. Um, so why rituals and spirituality? So spirituality is very important because it helps us, it helps to remind us that there is something bigger at play. Like I just did that, um, the 3D to 5D 101. So for those of you who tuned in for that, that is like complete explanation of what I feel we're here to do. And how important it is to understand that there is like a bigger plan in place and we get to just trust that you know we get to um to, we're along for the ride and we're going to surrender and let go and we're going to actively 
uh, co-create and take aligned action and be inspired and then do things like, like the start of me having all these offerings was I was walking Coda like I do every single day as part of my structure. Um, we're going to walk after, after I'm here with you guys. And, um, and I said to my guides, show me, tell me how I can serve my community. Tell me how I can show up and serve my community. Um, I want to be bringing more awareness around the Soul Ascension Academy, the six-week online group coaching program to take you through your deeply healing inner work for the purpose of your soul's ascension. A lot of times that does have to do with love. Um, and then ultimately, so you can manifest the life beyond your wildest dreams. So it's like how to bring more awareness to that. And it was like, Toom, 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 toom. all of these different ideas the angels in the universe see the good you're doing for others car thank you thanks lily i mean you too you guys too and it's available to us all and so i'm as you know my meditation practice and me connecting to my new intuition and my yoga practice like all these different practices um that i have in place um my rituals my routines they're designed and spiritually speaking, they're designed to keep me open as a vessel. They're designed to ground me in who I am and the strength and power in who I am. And they're designed to allow me to be a vessel, to come whatever is meant to come through me to support you guys, to support my community. You guys are my soul tribe and we're all in it together. And on, on all of you here, you're in it together. You know, we all get to lock arms together and do this deeply healing inner work. We're not alone doing it. We all want to do the work. We all want to rise up. And so let's fucking do it. That's how I feel. And so, so being the vessel, grounding in who I am, being the vessel. So, and you know, all of that starts with having created a safe space. So start looking at your own environment and see in what ways you're able to uh, create a safe space where that you feel like really good being at ease. Like I've got Coda Bear, he's coming in here. Come here, baby. He's doing a stretch. But I've got him. Here, come here. Here. I've got him. And so obviously you see he's the German Shepherd and he's pretty tough. Hey. Hey. Are we gonna walk soon? Oh, he's giving he's looking at me out of the corner by his his eyes. So Obviously, he's um, he's pretty tough. He's very protective. He's a very good boy, but he's very protective. And and I love German Shepherds because they are so protective. And um, he helps me feel like I'm in a safe space. And thanks, Lily. He's so much fun. We just laid down right here. So um, he helps me. And then also, I'm not going to lie. I lock my doors. Okay, I know there are people that don't lock their doors. I lock my doors like all the time. And um, nobody's coming to the house with him here because he's really ferocious, even to the people that he loves. Initially, he's like that. So, um, but for me, that's a big part of my own safety is locking my doors. So you look at your own home and see what kind of improvements um, or ways you can enhance your own sacred safe space. And then so um, as far as like rituals go, the reason why we want to have the rituals in place is because they um, give us structure, they provide us that security, like everything that I'm saying about reparenting and the inner child healing. So many of these concepts overlap. And, um, and in my book, I talk about a lot of it, how it overlaps. And um, in the Soul Ascension Academy, so many of this stuff overlaps. And so we just get to go with what makes sense, do that. And then, you know, we keep moving forward and keep working on whatever feels like it's the most relevant. So we do these rituals um, and these different practices to help us not feel as anxious about life, to help us feel more connected to ourselves and to others and to really help us um, move through any uncertainty. And these, these rituals can be applied to life, to love, to business, like all the things. Um, so this is a guide that I created last summer. It was a lot of fun to create it. Um, it's going to be available to those of you who are on my wait list. Um, if you decide to move forward with the Soul Such Academy, this is one of the goodies. This is not only, this is not the only exclusive offer that I'm going to be having for those of you who are on the wait list, but, um, but I, I put the link to the Soul Such Academy in the, um, in the description of this video and also um i've posted it you know i'll post i'll be posting it again too but if you get on the wait list and then you decide that you do want to move forward once registration does open then this is one of the gifts that you'll get 
um, in addition to some other goodies too. So, um, so this is a, um, a guide where I talk a lot about um, different concepts around spirituality. And then also I give examples of um, what you can do for the mo your morning rituals your daytime rituals and your evening rituals, because the more we can do all of those things, the stronger we are in who we are. That's what this is all about, is knowing yourself and being confident, identifying your needs, your desires, and, um, and then feeling safe to express them with others. So the morning is a very important time for us to, um, Cheryl, you're saying feeling grounded. Um, I don't know what I was saying that before too. Um, I was talking about rituals. Maybe it had to do with, with rituals. So in the morning, it's really good because um, especially for those of us who are empaths and who do feel the energy of others and, you know, can pick up on those subtle nuances when other people um, shift or can sense when other people are, are lying or just being um, inauthentic or untruthful in different ways. Um, so many different that we need to be able to be in nature to recharge our batteries and um, that it's okay to be alone, like all of those things. Um, and so many more that will classify you or qualify you as being an empath. Um, it's so important that in the morning, we really root down even more in who we are because in the morning, there's not as much buzz going on from the universe. Especially people in bigger cities where there's just like, you know, hustle and bustle everywhere. And then we pick up all that. So, um, so, so the morning time is a really great, um, great time of day to sit for a meditation. I, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Yes, the morning time is a great time to do it. Um, I prefer a midday meditation. <laughs> I like to get up. I like to do my morning rituals, which um, for me consist of, um, you know, I, I do my business in the bathroom. I always scrape my tongue, um, which is an Ayurvedic practice. I have a background in yoga as a yoga instructor too. Um, I went to Kripalu and they also have an amazing Ayurvedic school there. Um, and a big part of uh, when we sleep, you know, there's like that shit on your tongue. It's called ama, but it's like this stuff accumulates in our mouth and our tongue. And, and if you don't scrape your tongue, then you're just ingesting all that again. So that's our body's attempt to release the toxins through the night. And um, so we scrape the tongue or maybe you brush your teeth and then you brush your tongue too. Um, tongue scraping is very important because it's helping to get the toxins out of your body. So I wake up, I do my tongue scraping, I do my morning care, which is like washing my face and you know, uh, brushing my teeth and putting my contacts in. And then um, I love a warm beverage that's very grounding to me. I always do a little bit of tidying up when I come down. I always light incense first thing in the morning, my Nag Chamba that I love. Um, I always get essential oils going in the morning and those depend on how I want to just be able to... Um, <clears throat> set the tone for the day, shift the energy of the room. They also will clean the air. So like, um, you know, it's, it's getting cooler out and there have been some like colds going around. So I love Young Living Oils. I've been diffusing purification and um, lemongrass, which those are very, um, they're, they're great cleaners for the air. And they're also invigorating. Actually, I put orange and cedar wood in this morning. Um, so, the, so I get essential oils going. I get my... Um, my incense going and then I love to sit and write like I I this is my journal and um I like unlined paper because I can't be confined okay I just can't be confined to lines and um and yeah I just I just write and um I date it every morning and I you know good morning and then um I, I'll write like some people will do a minimum of three pages um, or they'll have journaling prompts that they follow. I just like to write stream of conscious style, consciousness style where it's just like whatever is coming through, I just write about. Sometimes it's, um, you know, my thoughts and my emotions, everything that's been going on. Sometimes it's just um, what my plan is for the day, getting my thoughts straight. At the end of every journal entry that I have, I always write, I love you, Kara. 
I love you, Cara. Like, I'm so proud of you. Like, I always like to conclude with that and then love me or whatever, <laughs> because we have to, you know, these self-love practices that we get to pepper them in throughout our entire day. Remember, it's a lifestyle. Remember, it's all practice. And so we get to pepper them in. And yes, I'm writing I love you, Cara, because I do. I love myself. I'm so proud of myself. And um, and I love, you know, I, I love who I am. And there's always work to be done. You know, we're always working and improving ourselves. But um, so, <clears throat> so, so doing that, sometimes I put music on too. Um, like right now, I just have on Krishna Das and the radio, um, my Sonos, I have surround sound. So <clears throat> I do that. I love I am statements. Um, for those of you who are on uh, the text line, we're doing the 21 day self love affirmation challenge. Um, tomorrow is one week. You guys can still join that. If you are interested in jumping on that, let me know and um, I'll give you the information. But yeah, every morning we're starting with a positive affirmation um, or an I am statement. So those are very important to be listing out um, in, you know, in your writing, whatever you're choosing to write about too. Um, visualizations are very important. See the light, see yourself as your highest you, you know, the your highest self. Visualize what your life looks and feels like. Um, and then I do my walk. I do my walk with Coda. Um, oh, Lily, I'll give you the, um, Lily, it's just you text L O capital letters, L O V E. Um, oh, shoot. L O V E one, four, three, two. Um, hold on. I'm writing it in here right now to five, eight, five, Four four nine 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 one three. So you just text love um, to that number, and then that like then you're in, and you'll get them every day. Um, so I do my walk every day with Coda. I love my walk, and um, he needs it too. But I definitely appreciate the movement, and that usually gets me going. Then I do my yoga and my um, my other exercises. But um, as I'm on my walk, I do my invocations and. That's basically, these are my rituals, my spiritual practices that are so important. So in my invocations, I'll say, um, thank you, soul, for putting me in the right place at the right time with the right people for my highest self, always, in all ways. And, um, and then I also, you know, will say, show me how to serve. Show me how to serve. Show me, you know, what to do. I'm here to serve my community. Show me how to serve. And I listen. I listen. I get the ideas. I act on it. And, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I'm posting, it's because it comes through from my higher self to be able to share with you guys. And I can't even tell you guys how many messages I get that say, you are writing my thoughts, like you're speaking right to me. So, um, so yeah, I love to be able to connect on such a deep level like that with you guys. So, um, and, and part of that I attribute to my, my invocations, my spiritual practice around that. So thinking to yourself, what morning practices and always moving always moving your body because we don't want any stagnation in the body. We got to move. Okay. Um, thinking to yourself, what practices for the morning you want to be able to, um, incorporate in my guide, I have a checklist to, um, to be able to remind you of the different things. So then daytime, um, meditations, because I love a daytime meditation, um, after I do my stuff in the morning and it kind of like gets me centered and ready for the rest of my day. So I love to do a meditation midday. Um, and then that just looks like I have a nook. Um, it's, it's upstairs in my room in, in a corner of my room. Um, cause I have a, a nice size room and, um, I have a sheepskin rug down and uh, a cushion, a meditation cushion, because it's important to have your hips above your knees and the spine long. So the spine, you know, the hips, um, everything stacks up, <clears throat> everything's aligned. The heart center is over the hips, the crown of the head is over the heart center, length in the spine, all of that. I put music on. Um, sometimes I do guided meditation, sometimes I don't. I just sit and listen to my music. <clears throat> um, I light my candle upstairs at my altar, I light sage at my altar and cleanse my space. Um, before I, I sit for my meditation, um, or I do my Palo Santo. And then um, I usually will pull a card, uh, one of my um, decks of cards. I have a bunch upstairs. So I'll pull a card and I'll just, you know, whatever, I'm, I shuffle them and whatever support I'm feeling like I need, um, that's what I'm shuffling. And then I either one falls out or I pull one. And it's, it's, it's like, generally speaking, it's like always right on. 
So, um, so I'm able to apply it to wherever my life is. And then I sit for my meditation and, um, doing breath work throughout the day, practicing pranayama. So in yoga, I've been certified as a yoga instructor for 10 years. So pranayama, our prana is our life force and yama is, um, the manipulation of, and so pranayama is breath work is changing our breathing to help break up patterns of our thought. And um, being able to utilize the breath in this way, it's like the gateway into our soul. So, um, so a very simple practice you can do right now is just noticing what your breath is doing. And then we'll do just like a couple rounds of um, inhaling for a four count and exhaling for a six count. And then you just do that again, inhaling for a four count and exhaling for a six count. Ideally, the breath stays in the abdomen. Sometimes the breath moves up to the side ribs or to the chest, um, but you just notice. And so just repeating that very simple, inhaling for four and exhaling for six. And you just can do that for like five or six rounds of breath and it grounds you, it brings us back uh, into the ventral vagal state, which is part of the po polyvagal theory of our nervous system. That's the place where we're more receptive uh, to ideas and our creativity flows and we're safe and we're social. And so, so the, our, you know, accessing our breath in that way is, is very, very powerful. <clears throat> and knowing that you always have that tool, you always have that practice, that ritual that you're able to do. You can do it in the car, you can do it in line at the bank, you could do it anywhere, line at the grocery store, what have you. Um, yoga and movement, working out, sex, intimacy, like all very important practices to consistently have in your day. Becoming the witness is a huge practice to have throughout your day. So, um, it's just observing your thoughts and uh, where you are at with um, your responses or your tendency to want to react. No, slow down. Create some space between how you feel, whatever um, situation that's requiring your attention, create some space. Become the witness. Watch how you want to react and instead respond. And meditation uh, really cultivates this space between. So <clears throat> remembering that. Um, the practice of mindfulness. And so to me, mindfulness and like um, sensuality and mindfulness, they really go hand in hand because sensuality to me, like some people are like, hey, sensuality. No, sensuality is like our senses, is perceiving the world through your senses. So right now, you just tuned into your breathing. Focus on what you see. Focus on what you hear. And it may be beyond the sound of my voice. It may be beyond, you know, this me coming through your screen. Focus on what you taste, what you smell, what you're feeling. And notice what your intuition tells you too about this moment and how you're feeling in this moment. You know, it's not just our five senses, it's our six senses. So to me, mindfulness um, gets cultivated, the practice of that being as present as possible that's a, a practice, that's a ritual. And so being as present as possible, mindfulness, sensuality, it all goes hand in hand. And it doesn't just happen overnight. It's a conscious effort you make. It's unlearning the, um, like the blind action. It's unlearning the tendency to just push forward and to be disconnected. And it's relearning to slow down, to be present, to watch your breath, to focus on what you're feeling and seeing and hearing and like everything you're taking in through your senses. So, so all of that is um, very important. Um, there's uh, some other practices and rituals I have. Um, I love to have bells on my doors. Bells are said to, um, the sound of them helps to not bring any negativity into your, into your life. So I have bells on my doors, you know, for those who are entering and, um, and surrounding yourself with positivity. I cannot stress that one enough. This one is really huge. You think about the people, you know, I talk in 3D to 5D. I talked about um, when we're around others who 
um, are in those lower vibrational states and how we feel we can feel it in our bodies. So um, you don't want to be around them. And that's okay. You just put some boundaries in place. If you are wanting to be rising, and you're wanting to um, be creating a new reality for yourself, it's okay to put boundaries in place and um, watch how you're sharing your time. Watch who you're investing in. Um, because when we invest, it's not just money. It's not just monetary. It's our energy. Who are we investing in? Whose energy do we want to be in? What kind of time are you investing in things? In money, yeah, in love. Like all of it, it's an exchange. It's an exchange of energy. And so surrounding yourself with those are who are going to lift you up. Um, and then a big practice is that it starts with you. And that it's, um, you know, we, I've talked about this a lot. We have to love, trust, and respect ourselves first before we can love, trust, and respect someone else. So um, the relationship you have, I, I used to always say this at the end of every single yoga class that I taught. Over 10 years ago, I was saying this at the end of every single class. <clears throat> the relationship you have with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship you have with other people. And so for my students at the time, for them coming to that quiet place inside themselves, they were um, revisiting this sense of who they were and establishing this place of peace and calm for themselves. And then they got to come back to that place whenever they felt they needed to access it. And the more you access it, the easier it is to get back there. So it starts with you and these practices are all supportive and they all help you get into that state to that place of um, your own, your power, you know, your inner peace and your own, your own power. Um, so what you ingest in your body is very important. Water is super important, especially for us as empaths. And I'm going to be talking more about this um, in the empowered empath series that starts tomorrow too. Um, the three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in this group. So um, water is very important. What you're eating, um, you know, what you're ingesting, be thinking about that, not just, you know, what you're taking in entertainment-wise, what you're taking in to nourish your body. So um, I love crystals. I love, I go into detail in my um, spiritual guide all about different crystals and different, um, the energy of all of them, the sage, the palo santo, the... Um, the incense, like all of, you know, I talk about all these things um, in my guide that, um, you know, that you'll have, but definitely these are daily practices to be able to incorporate in. And again, I just like to light the little, my little, little um, stick of it. I don't like to have a whole bundle of it because then it just like smokes and it's too much. So um, journaling, you know, planning your days, music is a, is a huge part of, um, a supportive practice for you and you know you can make it whatever you want I do love rap I do love R&B especially 90s R&B and rap and um, I love Tribe Called Quest and Tupac and Mob Deep and like gangsta you know like I that's that's a part I grew up on that music so I love that music I also love Sarah McLachlan and Counting Crows and Dave Matthews Band and I love Krishna Das and like I, I'll have um, all my music set and I'm pure like I love all of my music that I have playing um, right now. Getting into nature is very important. So the music piece, you make it what you want it to be. But for me, it is a spiritual. It's a devotion for me to be able to um, listen and help them shift my energy and incorporate those practices for me. Um, getting into nature is very important. Every single day I walk Koda um, and and there was a period of time where a couple times a week I would go, I would get in waterfalls every, every week I would be around waterfalls. A couple times a week I would be because it's what my soul needed. Um, this week I have an intention of getting out to um, Ithaca down to some waterfalls because it is very, very restorative for me. And it helps to keep me grounded and um, recharge my batteries. You know, with all these offerings that I'm sharing with you guys, I also take the time for me and, um, and root down more in who I am and, and make this connection for myself. So, um, yeah, and doing the work, these practices of being able to do the work, um, having an awareness of what is blocking you from receiving all you want to experience in this life through manifestation and co-creation, having the awareness of what's blocking you, um, deprogramming and reprogramming. So unlearning and relearning, you know, this is a big part of, um, of healing this void, 
doing our inner child work, doing our reparenting, creating the rituals and the spiritual practices to put in place to help you through this healing lifestyle. So um, energy healing, clearing, you know, we're energetic beings, acknowledging that um, you have breakdowns, that there are triggers, um, that there is a need for emotional, mental, spiritual support for you. Um, you do your journaling, you're reflecting, like all of that, all of that is so important. And, and I get into a ton of that in the academy. Um, money, work with money mindset, working with a coach, all so, so, so supportive and so important to be able to do. So evening practices, just, just, just like a ton more for daily rituals. Um, but then evening practices to wrap up, you know, this concept of our daily routines. Winding down. Make sure that you're creating a separation between your daytime activities and your evening activities. And so winding down. That may look different for everybody. For me, I'll have made dinner for my boys and I clean up my kitchen. After I clean up my kitchen and I've, my candles are, is, are always going, I light an incense and I get oils going. And that for me, I'm very like olfactory connected. Like my sense of smell is like does a lot for me. And so I, um, that shifts me into like downshift, like a lower gear where I go, okay, I'm starting to unwind. I'm starting to relax. Kitchen's cleaned up. Everybody's fed. We're good. You know, we've had dinner together. We've connected. Now we get new oils going and, um, and my incense going. Sometimes I do some writing in the evening too, some journaling, some reflecting, um, and grounding, I love, love, love a, a hot bath in Epsom salts. Um, sometimes I cannot get warm. I'm chilled to my bone. And the only thing that helps me is taking a, a very hot bath in Epsom salts. And a big part of that is like sometimes that those are ascension symptoms and um, being so cold. And so being able to um, take a bath as part of winding down with a shit ton of Epsom salts is very supportive and therapeutic. Um, I have my, I have a, some Bach flower essences right up on my bedside stand too. If I'm ever having trouble like falling asleep or um, if my thoughts are just going really fast. So, um, and the gratitude rock is really important. Like we'll just say here, when my clients sign on for me, I like, like my one-on-one -on -one clients, I always send a care package and um, I include a rock. And this goes on your bedside stand. This isn't it. This is just my quartz. My rock upstairs is a rose quartz. But um, you hold it in your hand and you just go through everything. Uh, you say thank you and you go through everything you're thankful for for the entire day. And then, um, then, you, then you think of your most favorite that you are most grateful for and, um, and say thank you for that. Every single night wrapping up the day with this gratitude practice. Um, and I always kiss my rock. And I say thank you. And then my rock, you know, my rock is just on my bedside stand. So, um, so that's an important practice that you can incorporate in to wrap up your day too and bring more gratitude in and help you focus on the positive, help you help you focus on the good. Very important to do. Um, grounding down in yourself, your self-care, whatever you do. You brush your teeth. I wash my face every night. I have to wash my face every morning and every night. Otherwise I break out. Freaking way too old for that stuff, but it happens. Um, so uh, maybe you floss, like, you know, whatever your practice is around your own self-care, your own hygiene, letting that be a ritual for you. Um, it's all about just creating stability. Another thing is that um, I have manifestation water on my bedside stand. So um, you can use just any post-it notes. Um, and sometimes I like to commit to doing a whole pack of post-it notes or maybe a whole month of them. But um, being able to have your notes and on your, on your note, you write out everything you want to be calling into your life. And I always bring a glass of water to bed with me. So you write it all out. And then I have a slab of agate over my, um, over my notes. Like this is actually in my guide. Like I have this slab of agate over my, um, my Turk, my post-it notes. And then I have a selenite wand that, um, that I'll stir it too. But so the water, you know, you sleep with your water over all of everything you're manifesting, everything you're calling into your life. And then in the morning you drink your water. I already drank my, my morning water. Um, and it's room temperature and some people will add lemon to it, whatever, but 
that's helping then you ingest that and then it helps you you know with this co-creation with this process it's all about living with intention it's all about being able to bring in more <clears throat> actions that are aligned with what with the life you want to be living it's a healing journey it's a lifestyle remember it's all practice so um in sleep making sure that you're getting really restful sound sleep and again then there's a checklist um for everything that you have in here there's also a bonus section um, new moon intentions and full moon rituals in my guide. So, um, so thinking to yourself, which practices would be the most supportive for you? Because this isn't one size fits all. This is just whatever is going to be working for you and what is realistic for you to incorporate into your days. So, um, so those are my thoughts on, um, you know, being able to work with rituals and reparenting and um, doing whatever you can to soothe the void, you know, to heal the void that you have, to not want to escape, to acknowledge that the shadow self is part of who you are. And, you know, we, we get to have light and dark. It's a balance of both, just like the yin yang, just like the masculine feminine energy. It's a balance of both. And so, you know, remembering those things, remembering the inner child healing, the reparenting, all of that, we go, we dig deep, we dive deep in the Soul Ascension Academy. As I mentioned, we start October 4th. Um, there are payment plans available. So these different offerings that I've had, um, you know, a couple, last weekend, it was um, balancing sacred energies. Midweek, it was 3D to 5D. Now rituals and reparenting. And then Monday, we start Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Empowered Empath three-day series. Um, where I'm just giving you guys it's a taste, like all of this, if you can even believe it, all of this stuff is covered in the Soul Ascension Academy in more detail. And you have the support and camaraderie of like a sisterhood, a group of other people who are diving in to do this deeply healing inner work. So um, the link for that is in the, con or is in the um, description of this video. If you are wanting more information around that, you can read all about the program. You can see if it feels aligned with you if you want to get on the wait list because if you when you're on the wait list and um, I will be opening that up ahead of uh, like open registration for others for the public but um, you'll have you'll have your exclusive offers available if you do feel called to commit six weeks that we start October fourth so um, so yeah so doing some deep dives together and I would love to be able to support you in this path in this journey I have so much to offer you. And I'm excited about it all. I love when others are ready to, to jump in and do their deeply healing inner work. And um, so know that that link is all in there. And um, you guys, for those of you who are here right now, I'll stay on for like another minute. Do you have any questions or, um, or comments about anything that I covered today or um, any questions about the Soul Ascension Academy? Let me know um, in the comments, you know, what your thoughts are. Also, there's a rest, while I'm waiting for those to come through, for those of you who are on here live, thank you for sticking with me for this long. Um, it's been an honor to share all this with you. I want to look up this um, Russell Brand quote about um, what he says about addictions and um, gateway. Okay. So he says, um, you guys know Russell Brand. I'm in another tab, but you know Russell Brand. So um, he says, cannabis isn't a gateway drug. Alcohol isn't a gateway drug. Nicotine isn't a gateway drug. Caffeine isn't a gateway drug. Because that's what we've all been told is these are gateway drugs. No, 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 no. Trauma is the gateway. Childhood abuse is the gateway. Molestation is the gateway. Neglect is the gateway. Drug abuse, violent behavior, hypersexuality, and self-harm are symptoms, not the cause, of much bigger issues. And it almost always stems from a childhood filled with trauma, absent parents, and an abusive family. But most people are too busy laughing at the homeless and drug addicts to realize that their own children could be in their shoes in 15 years. Communicate, empathize, rehabilitate. So I just, I love that quote because... Um, it's so spot on, like it's so real and, um, and it's meaningful to me because, you know, this is why I do what I do is to be able to understand that there's a bigger picture here and we can do our deeply healing and our work and, um, and I'm so here for it. So you guys, no questions. 
Um, all right. Well, then I hope you have a really awesome day. I hope you gained some new knowledge, some new awareness um, around the content that I did share. And reach out, DM, let me know if there are any questions that do come up for you. And, um, and yeah, hopefully you will get on the wait list for the Soul Ascension Academy, okay? And I'll be in here tomorrow live with um, the Empowered Empath three-day series, day one of that, okay? Hope you guys have a great day. Peace.